بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your life your child's life your grandchild's life your great grandchild's life and so on as was the life of your father your grandfather your grandmother your great grandmother your great great grandmother all the way to adam alayhi salam their lives and what would take place within their lives in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a constant so you and i we travel through time directionally we only go forward you go one way you can't go back in time but for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him time is a constant in a sense that it's not moving for him it's we are going through that time but for allah he sees that entire time as one and i hope that we understand this so when somebody has that level of understanding such as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's understanding of everything that is going to take place that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what did he say in in hadith in a sahih authentic hadith he says one of the first creations that allah created was what a qalam the first creation of allah was qalam and what happened next allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the qalam 50000 years before anything was created allah commanded the qalam and said to the qalam write whatever is going to take place from the beginning until qiyama in the world write everything down and the qalam on the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote down every single thing that is going to happen so everything that you are going to go through in this life <clears throat> everything every family is going to be tested through everything every child every young kid every old kid are going to be tested from this was already written in the ilm of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once we understand that <clears throat> we have a second thing which is that each one of you we claim each one of us that is here we all claim that we are <clears throat> believers we believe in allah we have this word we use to denote our iman to represent our belief is the word is iman we have iman in allah we believe in allah the word iman comes in the arabic language from the root word of aman <clears throat> from the root word of aman what does aman mean aman means zawal al khawf zawal al khawf the absence of fear it's the absence of fear which is aman So when you have the word iman when you believe in Allah and you have iman in Allah when you have iman in akhirah when you have iman in the six pillars of iman of, of the faith when you have iman in those things when you have iman in akhirah when you have iman in qadr you are not in fear of the unknown that is going to come because Allah protects you from that your iman protects you from that When you lose someone you have iman it helps you it helps you reconcile between your brain irrespective of your age whether you are in grade 7 grade 8 grade 9 grade 10 or you are 70 75 76 77 80 years old when you lose someone that iman comes and it protects you and it gives it removes the fear that was imminent for you to get into I know of people who have converted and after they 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 become converts their parents if they lose any of their older grandparents right people who are sometimes highly intellectual professors at universities writing these giant papers in in peer reviewed journals when they lose a cat they can't reconcile when they lose their parents they can't reconcile and many of them go into this 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 
imminent turmoil, sometimes four or five, six years of their lives. Because they're in constant fear. They don't know what happened to their dad. They don't know what happened to their ma'am, mom. They don't know what happened to my sister, what happened to my brother. I have no idea. But when you have Iman, right, you have this sukoon. You're like, yes, I know what happened. Alhamdulillah, they died on Iman. Now, if they happen to have died as a form of Islamophobic events, then you have the Iman. You have this sukoon. My, my parents went to Jannah. It's only a matter of 50, 60, 70 years. I will be joining them too. You have Iman. You know, I bring this to you because <clears throat> many times the conversations of Islamophobia are very important. And there might be people who are sensitive to that. This community has recently witnessed a very horrific event. Other communities have witnessed those events. And in this whole conversation, what ends up happening is we forget to talk about what that person that is struggling or people who are struggling with Islamophobic Islamophobic you know, statements or, or, or attacks on them that how should they react to it? And there's two ways you can react to it. You can be a reactionary person and you can react and, you know, just say, you know, this is not allowed and stuff. Or you can think, put things in perspective for you. The next verses that I'm going to recite, inshallah, hopefully would put things in perspective for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah says, we have beautified for those who choose to disbelieve in the message of Islam. They are disbelievers, they do not believe in Islam. They don't have Iman. Allah says, زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا For them, we have beautified for them their life. So everything they do, they think they're, at, they're doing it the best. In every single action of theirs, they think this is the right thing to do. When somebody is with, with such a horrific if, event that took place in London, that person in his mind is like, this is the right thing to do for me. Because this world is what I live for. This is my life. And these Muslims are a threat to my life. So he sees that. And because this life has been beautified for him, he doesn't think anything beyond the fear of that life being taken away from him, his lifestyle being taken away from him, they become very, very, you know, in other words, they, they become very uneasy with Muslims being around in the society. Because it, it, it almost negates the entire progress that they have done. And you know, they're like, oh, here comes this, this group of people, no matter how many times you try to help them to assimilate, they don't assimilate. A side fact for all of you, if you read history, whenever any nation conquered another society, so whenever you would have like, you know, the crusaders conquering Africa and parts of Africa, what ends up happening is the conquering power, the invading power, the culture they bring becomes the dominant culture of that land and the, the organic or the intrinsic culture of that country or that land is lost. Look at Canada for that sakes, right? The British came in, the French came in, the indigenous culture is lost. It's not there anymore. It's not the part and parcel. But if you read history, the only time where the people that were being conquered their culture overpowered the conqueror's culture is when somebody tried invading into Muslim lands. Historically. Mongols, when they tried invading into Muslim lands, they became Muslims. They killed Baghdad. They killed more than 2, 2.53 million Muslims. But eventually at the end, they're like, man, these people are strange people. And they were forced to admit that this is the right path and Mongols become Muslim. And they take on the culture and the religion of the same country they're trying to conquer. That's the power of your Iman. Then Allah says, Allah gives you this surety. Every single one, if whether you are young, whether you're a student, whether you're working in jobs, hear this out. Allah says, If you had taqwa, if you strived and struggled to place your good deeds between the wrath of Allah, that is taqwa, wiqaya, that you use your good deeds as a shield from the wrath and the punishment of Allah. You use that as a shield. If you did that, وَالَّذِينَ 
What does Allah says after that? He says, فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ You will be above all those who mocked you. You will be above all those who وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا I missed this part. Every single one of them, they mock you. They mock Muslims for whatever we are. Look at our shape, look at, you know, random, total randomness. You're at Bulk Barn and this guy is like, oh, does you, you know, to me, he's like, oh, did you have camels in your country? What are you talking about? Right? That is where Islamophobia begins, right? In their minds. It's like, oh, this is a guy from some camel land that we need to talk about. You know, you, know, you should be thankful to Canada that you've got cars. I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? But when you understand that this mocking is an inevitable thing that you all Muslims, every single one of us is going to face. At your jobs, you're going to face it. At your school, you're going to face it. In your university, you're going to face it. Don't ever understand, walk away saying, no, 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 I'm never going to face this. Everybody's always going to accept Islam. No. But we stand up to Islamophobia. We stand up and we raise our voices and we don't become weak. But we understand the net consequence. If you have taqwa, if you use that shield, they may mock at you, let them mock at you. No problem. I've got taqwa in my heart. Don't worry. If you think I am under you today, Allah is guaranteeing you, you will be above them on the day of judgment. Above all the people who mocked, not only those in Canada, entire the entire people that mocked Islam, they made Islam into mockery. فوقهم. If you had taqwa, Allah will make you above them on the day of judgment. Then Allah reminds you, Wallahu yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Don't ever jeopardize your religion for the matters of rizq, for the matters of job, for the matter of a, you know, a, a degree. Do not compromise on your religion because Allah says, Allah gives you rizq. One of the number one reasons why people can't have taqwa, I gotta go out with my boss, you know, what can I say? He's there going to the bar, I need to go. No, you don't. You're a Muslim, stand your ground. Let them know that this is not acceptable. When I used to travel in my previous life, I, I lived in this earth previously too, but in my previous life, when I would travel for corporate work, I still remember, I went to Germany, I went to that person and I said, I cannot be sitting on a table that alcohol is being served. Like imagine my company has sent me to Germany for some training and I go and tell this like CEO of that company, I'm not going to sit on this table. As long as you, you know, I need a separate table that has no alcohol. They will accommodate you, but you need to have that peg. And I'm talking about this when Muslims were not a thing, when this is 9-11 and being Muslim was bad. Now, like being Muslims, yeah, that's good. You talk about Islamophobia, you're bringing change. Those conversations didn't take place when I was young at that time. It's a good opportunity for all of you. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ تَقْوَى And understand that you do not compromise your faith ever for a few dollars. Somebody just came to me after the first khutbah and they were like, Sheikh, I travel. Can I just do tayammum? Because what the places that I try, drive my truck, it's minus 40. You don't compromise your faith. Our faith is very pragmatic. It's very practical. Right? If you don't have the right, obviously it's not practical if you have ignorance in your religion. But if you learn your religion, it's very practical. So giving answers to solutions, that's the job of the Imams. But seeking answers is your job. So that you never compromise your faith. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I will end with this. He says, كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً wahida That the entire people was one nation. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down angels, uh, sent down anbiya. Their purpose was, if you do this, Jannah is your reward. If you do this, Jahannam is your reward. Yes, the purpose of ka Nabi coming. People sometimes say, you know, Imams, you know, the, the Imams always, you know, make us fear. Kul, ya akhi, kul marra jahannam, jahannam. La, bilax. The purpose of messengers is munzirin wa mubashirin. They will warn you and they will give you glad tidings. Just, the, just last night I was reading a book, just a total random fact, it's not even here in the, in, in the, in the thing. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Jahim in the Quran 26 times. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Iqab, punishment related to Jahim 26 times. So He warns you 26 times about Jahannam, about Jahim, then tells you the qualities of Jahim 26 times. So you're not, a, you, you're aware of what Allah is talking about that. Likewise, the balance, the, 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 the numerical balance in the Quran is, is, is impeccable if you study Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمْ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ Allah sent down this book. This book is the only absolute truth in the world. Nothing else is true except that. بِالْحَقِّ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ all the divisions you have, you can reconcile it by using this book. Then Allah says, uh, Then Allah says, وَمَخْتَلَفَ فِيهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ People are not going to listen to Islam because of what? They have jealousy. بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ The jealousy amongst them that the things that Muslims differ on, no, 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 we can't believe in that. No, no, no. Because if we do, we already, what, what, when are you jealous? You were jealous when you believed that other person's got something better than you. So they are jealous. Allah is saying they are jealous. Why are they jealous? Because they know that we have something better. Allah is telling you this. Not me, not some shaykh. Allah is telling you their feelings in their hearts. Then Allah says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have iman, come back to that same word. If you have iman, Allah will guide you to haqq. What is required is that you peg yourself to la ilaha illallah. Wallahu yahdi man yasha'u ila siratil mustaqim. Allah is the one, He guides whoever He wishes. And the other meaning of man yasha, whoever chooses and wishes to be guided to Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Then Allah ends this with a seal for all of us. He says, Am man jannah? Did you think for one second that you're going to enter Jannah just like walking, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. MashaAllah, the gates of Jannah, let me just walk in. Did you think for one second that's going to be the case? No, no, no. Allah says, Am man jannah? Did you think that you're going to enter Jannah? <clears throat> has not the news of the people that came before you, didn't that come to you? They were struck with war and calamities, difficulties in their life. life. The earth between their feet were shaken. They were shaken. We were shaken when the Hyde Park thing took place. Wazulzilu, Allah is saying, that is going to happen. Wazulzilu, you're going to be tested. The people before you were tested. Then Allah says, Hatta yaqul al Rasul. We are not at that stage. Allah is saying, even the messengers who were sent down with the books, they raised their hands to Allah and the people amongst with the messengers. Ya Allah, mata nasrullah. Where is your when is your going your help going to come, O oh Allah? We're not at that position. Alhamdulillah. But the, the Allah is reminding you that even the ones who were supposed to guide their nations by the wahi revelation, they ended up saying, Mata Nasrullah. Then Allah reminds you all and them, Ala inna Nasrullahi qareeb. Indeed, the help of Allah is just around the corner. What is required from you and me is to have iman. And with iman, taqwa. And understand that this entire universe is Allah's universe. Anything that happens bad in your life, anything that happens good in your life, mu'min. If you have iman, how strange are the matters of those who have iman. Amruhu kulluhu khair. Every single matter that happens and befalls on a believer is good. In asabahu darra. If difficulty and calamity falls, فصبر. He's patient. If you're going through a difficult time in your life, be patient. You're being rewarded. 
for every single time, every single time you think of that event, every single time that pain is in your heart, every single time you are reminded of that in, your, in the middle of the night, every single time you missed your loved one, sabr. And with that sabr, immense reward. وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ sarra. If things are nice, if abundance happens, then shakar. The Muslim man, a person who's a Muslim, he says, Alhamdulillah, life is good. And he doesn't forget Allah in that. And this is the net consequence of Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us true Iman in our hearts. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin fa astaghfiru fa innahu al-ghafur rahim. In the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grants every single one of us infinite, unshakable iman in our hearts. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects those of us who have been disconnected from Quran an everlasting connection with the Quran. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fortifies the connections of those who are connected with the Quran, that Allah increases them and gives them tawfiq. If you start half juz a day, that is, if you are a slow reader, one hour of reading, you can split that reading 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, entire day. Sometimes we spend a lot more time scrolling on WhatsApp than the time I'm asking you to read. You have 60 days left before Ramadan. You can finish Quran, one entire Quran before Ramadan comes. So it is an opportunity for us to warm up for Ramadan and connect ourselves. Now, when you're going to aim to finish the entire Quran, if you haven't finished an entire Quran in the last year before last Ramadan, you will probably fall short, no problem. But it's warm up. You're going to be much better prepared for Ramadan than those who will go in Ramadan first day and they got muscle fatigue and khalas, the Quran is never touched again. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those uh, youth and young children that are in schools and high schools and universities that Allah protects their iman and Allah gives them the tawfiq to be steadfast on their iman and those that are struggling and that are rattled that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the sukoon and amn that they need to have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we offer with the help of the board over here, Alhamdulillah, we offer program for teenagers on Sundays. Alhamdulillah, this, this Sunday we're beginning our course. Uh, for those of you that haven't registered, it's a great opportunity to give them the environment for your younger kids to, to instill the word Iman. We focus on building an environment where their Iman can be nourished. Their love for the deen can generate. So when somebody mocks at the topi or the hijab or the way you're dressed, the Iman kicks in and says, no, I am a Muslim. I believe that I am a Muslim. And I will make a stand and I will make sure that you never talk to me like that.